Who are you? Who are you? Just uh, another who are you drop. Uh, he, he, so here we are. Welcome back. This is our Severance last video for season one. And there's not a lot of symbolism drops in the last three episodes. Nothing new to touch on. Yeah, it's like it's like one major thing that the whole last three episodes is like ramping up and preparing for. Mm -hmm. So while the biggest reveal of the whole series is coming up, uh, this is going to be the shortest video, even though we're only co we're, we're covering three of the last three episodes. Mm -hmm. So I just played that for fun. The, the, who are you? I thought it was interesting that we again get hit with the, who are you mm -hmm. phrase, which is all over the place. Of course, you know, Alice in Wonderland and, and here and everywhere else. Uh, I've got 435 to start on episode seven. And it's just to point out Grainer's, yeah, it's right there, his security card. Full access, and it can't be tied to anyone. Take it to work tomorrow. So he's got a black card. And when I see a black thing, a black credit card looking thing, that, you know, going back like 20 plus years ago, uh, there was some of the first like black cards that came out. Do you remember? American Express. Yes. And, and, you know, it was like an elite thing to have. You'd, like you'd a big have, deal. Yeah. You'd have like, you could, it gave you a lot of special powers. Like you could just walk into an airport and get on a plane or, or stuff like that. Yeah. Maybe not exactly literally that, but stuff like that. You were something like a, a, a secret agent or whatever, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? like relative. Truly to an, yeah. An elite card. Yeah. Yeah. Part of the elite. Yeah. Oh, by the way, if you hear some, noise like there's some raindrops hitting the roof that that's what that noise is um so i've got written down here now this gets kind of crazy um black credit card that makes me think of saturn that makes me think of obviously the black goo stuff mm -hmm. uh and then uh th with the whole financial thing you know it being a black card black credit card representation you know i know it's a security card but that makes me think of BlackRock, which is that investment firm that actually owns the whole world. Yes. You could accurately say that, in, in, that they, in a way they own all of everything. Mm -hmm. And then that makes me think of Black, like the, the reason why it's called BlackRock is it's, the, I believe that that is a reference to the solidified Black goo. Mm -hmm. And if you go to Mecca, it's got a Black Rock. Okay. And Mecca is Islam, and mm -hmm. Islam is um, has Lucifer as its as its god. Yes. And and the prince of this world, the the I should say the king of this world is Lucifer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my actual thing I wrote down here is black equals Saturn equals black goo equals black rock equals black rock equals Mecca equals Islam equals Lucifer equals owns the whole earth. Yeah. Black. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thumbs it up. Yep. And then uh, I've got 2502. Helly chose Defiant Jazz for her music experience. And I just thought that that was interesting. It was that, I mean, when I yeah. saw her, the list of options she had, my eyes went straight to Defiant Jazz. And I was like, oh, she, of course, and of course, that's the one she, she picked because mm -hmm. she's, the the defiant one in in this rep, you know realm this earth realm mm -hmm. um and then i i wrote here that it, i find it interesting that as the scene progresses from let's say we start off and it's just like oranges and reds so it's really just the reds you start off with yeah and it's almost like there's a story being told just in the flashes of lights here. You start off, you just have the, I'm just going to call it red. I know there starts off with orange too. But, and, and then the blue starts coming in after, especially when they flash to him. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Then we get all the... Like, it gets more and more extreme. It just red, just blue. It gets, like, it gets harsher. <laughs> to the point where it's the obvious just red-blue alarm symbolism. Yeah. And, I, again, I just take it as, you know, battle of the red... The, there's two sides. Yeah. Yeah, so so uh, I think that the colors here are played on a lot in th the visuals of this episode. Mm -hmm. uh, like while they're sitting in the break room and the outside, the, the main room here is all blue. The break room is all red. Yeah. Or the, they're not the break room, but, you know, the like the, the little kitchen yeah. that they've got. Yep. And I thought it was actually interesting. I, I can't find a visual for this real quick. I don't have a timestamp, but I thought it was interesting when... Um, who is it? Mark and Helly are sitting in their kitchen talking. And, and they're it's like all, glowing red. And they're glowing. They're, they're bright red. Yeah. Okay. And then outside there in the main room, it's solid blue. And Dylan walks over to get a egg at the egg bar mm -hmm. and he's in solid blue. So that's again, a representation of that. He's, a, he's, he's representing Jesus. Yeah. Down here on the earth for us in Satan's empire, mm -hmm. you know, blue land on the, on the blue marble. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> they call it the blue marble. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. And, and at that time, the other three are all shown in extreme red. Them, mm -hmm. them in the kitchen. And then, uh, Irving, I, I've got a timestamp for that. When, or do I, is that even in, in the next episode? That is, that's in episode eight. Okay, we'll get, so we'll get that oh, a little okay. later. Uh, see this, right, right, right. Who's to say that I've got 2840. And I think this is actually the last thing for episode seven. And <laughs> we'll move on to eight. Yeah. Where am I going? 28. What do we got here? Oh, right. Let's get an audio clip here. Black card. No cavalry yet. Also notice the color of her shirt. Dress. It, yeah. The, the girl thing. <laughs> it's um it's hard boiled egg yolk yellow. Easter egg yellow. Easter egg yellow. Okay. And I wonder if Dylan in this episode is wearing a white shirt because that would fulfill the, those two being the representing the the resurrection the, the yeah the 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 actual sacrifice the actual death and resurrection event that's in the next episode. I feel like he's mostly wearing white. He's with usually a, wearing like, blue blazer. Or whatever. He's usually wearing some kind of, some kind of like very light shirt or white shirt. Let's just scrub through real quick, see if we can find him. I won't I won't spend a lot of time on it. Oh, actually, he attacked um Milchek. Milchek, so so we can go there. He is wearing a white shirt. Yeah. So coming up then, we get those two standing at the egg bar. Well, I'll I'll get there when I get yeah. there. Okay. Oh, twenty eight forty. I know I'm stumbling around a little bit here. I don't know. I think it's time for a field trip. To the security office where all the security guards work. Amazing. Yeah. Who's to say there are security? Interesting she poses it as I think it's time for a field trip. When reflecting upon what I'm about to say. Uh, guards, with this. I've only ever seen Grainer. What about Milchick? He can't be everywhere at once. This the whole line of... Do you know where the office is? Petey saw it during a fire alarm last year. He showed me. What does she say? She says, who's to say there are security guards? When does she say it? Did she already say it? We can do yeah. it. Okay. Oh, guards. yep. I just didn't catch it. There you go. Something in there. Anyway, she says, yeah, who's to say there are security guards? This gets into a bigger general concept of mine that I've been calling the parents are out of town or the boss is on vacation. And... It is basically a way to point out the fact that 
the I think the elite of this world have already fallen in terms of like absolute control. And it's just taking us a while to realize it. And I see all these new like energy companies starting up. You don't notice it, but there's all this talk. And I see all this new news about this new fusion, small uh, nuclear fusion reactor. It's just, it's got, there's all this news around it. And even people that know nothing about nothing, they're saying, wow, looks like I'll be able to buy one of these at Home Depot in a few years and just power my whole ranch. And that kind of stuff was like people got murdered for. Yes. For like the last 200 plus years. Mm -hmm. If you had a device that was self-sustaining, going to make you, yeah, yeah, and just in general, be able to be like off grid, like Mm -hmm. Satan's grid, then you were killed. You were flat out killed. Dozens or hundreds of scientists just plain killed. Mm -hmm. And the videos weren't allowed to be online anywhere there. Yep. But now in this, in, in 2022, I'm seeing so many little nuggets of evidence pointing to the fact that the the golden age has begun. But of course, when such a thing comes, it's not like you're going to wake up one day and open up your door and it's you know totally different. You, yeah. Your your fusion re- reactor isn't going to be <laughs> pre-installed overnight worldwide hundreds of millions of them. Yeah. <laughs> We've got to slowly work our way back to something like that. Yeah. And so <clears throat> just like, and, and the re- the reason I say it is the parents are out of town, the boss is on vacation. Well, I, I think, I, I think more, like I've worked in a traditional office office. So I, I know what it's like when the, the actual boss in the corner office is gone on a Friday. Everyone's yeah. just dicking around and, mm-hmm. and hanging out in each other's cubicles or, or other offices. Yeah. And uh, you get this like extreme f- freeness feeling <laughs> that can only be explained if you've been in that situation. Yeah, it's just more relaxed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and the same thing when the parents are out. And that's why I say it's interesting how Heli posed it as going on a field trip. Because they're, it's, it's equating them to children. Mm-hmm. And the parents are out of town and they can actually just look around and do stuff. They can jump on the bed. They can eat all the stuff in in the freezer, all the good ice cream stuff, mm-hmm. they eat all the desserts, right? Like, I think that's. Yeah. Even um, the woman that Mark meets with um, and kills Grainer earlier in this episode, she even said that he's only been severed for two years. So you're just still a, still a baby. Right. You know? Yep. So there's a lot of yeah, references like, to them just being like just born children. Yep. Yep, exactly. Okay, well, that's all I got on episode seven. Let me do this, this. And then I think I might have the first, first thing timestamp for the next cool. one. Okay, so we're going to go to 2.30. That's, that's my notes, right? No. I switched mine. Oh, okay. You're playing, though. Oops. Okay, so here we go. Oh, yeah. Okay, so enough of that, but... We can see that Ace of Spades is playing and that he his paint utensil is in the shape of a spade. Um, so I wrote down that Ace of Spades is a very well-known um, card game or like in, in like the whatever you call them, the psychic cards, I guess you could say. Um, it's called a black card or it indicates death in one's future. Shoot. What is that? What are those cards called? I don't know. Dang it. 
See, I'm like I was hoping you would know. I'm like occult, but just on like mm-hmm. reading interesting things. I'm I'm not like into like witchcraft stuff. <laughs> yeah, there's a word for it. <laughs> I yeah, but anyway, so the fact that that song is playing and his utensil is in a spade, um, it could represent that Irving any is about to be released or exit from where he's trapped in right now um, is what I saw from that representation. Okay. Means death. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, when he doesn't go back to being an innie anymore, they say that they technically are dead, you know? Right. Cause they're never, they'll right. never exist anymore. And this is the second um, time they showed him painting. Right. So, and this is the second time they played that song. I think so. Maybe, yeah. I think they touched on it in episode seven. So yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure they played that song ex- exclusively while he's doing that painting. So yeah. it's like they're hammering on Yeah, it. that's what he's doing. They're really hammering on that symbolism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know what band that is. Do you, do you know? In the subtitle, it just says Ace of Spades. I try to look it up. But I've heard the song before. I, yeah. I, I We should look up the song, see if there's some interesting symbolism you know, that they have over yeah. there. All right, already so we're on episode okay, eight. eight. I've got 30. two. I've got two twelve. Okay, oh, on. you know what? I don't even need to go there. I just said more black goo. I mean, come on, his paint. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They show the big black stuff coming out like a toothpaste yes. tube, right? Yeah. Just more black goo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just too much. Oh, okay. What's your next one? Nine twenty. Okay, I'm gonna go to mine then. Yeah. Um. All right, so this is to set it up. I, uh, Heli reaches a hundred percent in whatever quota that they have to reach. So oh yeah. I just thought this was really interesting. What's popped up on the screen? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is what I've got to mention on too. <laughs> it's like the biggest pixelated video game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Video game of the nineties. Yep. Even in your darkest moments, I could see you arriving here. In refining your macro data files, <laughs> to this company. And Glory. Here, Egan. I. I love you. I love you. But now I must. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that right there is just super creepy. Um, the "I love you" statement. Yeah. And he flies away like a superhero after that. I guess I won't I won't play any more of that, but he flies away like a yep. superhero. Yep. Um so I just see this as a representation of what they're doing is just a game um to the these people in charge. And they're just trying to win over souls is any way they can, even by saying, I love you. Right. Just they'll say anything, whatever they can they can do and say yep. to win them over. And I just took down that I I love how their excitement goes rapidly to like disgust on their yeah. face. Yeah, exactly. Within like under 10 seconds, everyone's like, yeah, she did it hundred percent. And then you get even Irving here. Um, you can tell he's like, like Oh, what, what are we, this? what are we doing? It's the, what are we doing with our life? Face. Yes. Yes. Cause they've all woken up to the lie of yeah. here. Yeah. They're not worshiping him anymore. And and you know what? I like how you pointed out that it's interesting how they portray it as a video. I mean, it's it's obviously a video game like graphics. Yeah. Indicating the the no real indicating that they're in a video game that you know they're in the representation that they're in. They're in this simulated reality already. Yes. As as the, what is being portrayed, you know, in, in the symbolism of the show. But then they go one more step deeper and they've got this simulation inside the simulation. Yeah. By the time you get from there, you know, so they're already, so that's three levels deep. So they're in level two, looking at level three deep and realizing yeah. that, oh my God, like not only are we in a simulation, but we're just, we're here like basking in the in the victory 
of a the simulation it nested another one nested downwards and it's so it's a complete yeah. complete nothing no an empty victory yes it's funny i'll touch more on that later on in this okay. episode as well yeah i don't have <laughs> i know that was a very weird way to put it but no it's it's very much rep there's a lot of more representation of what you just said Okay. Coming Good. Up. Yeah, Val's got a lot more notes than me this time. I didn't get much sleep again. I'm, I'm like super tired. <laughs> uh, and this is a lot of work doing this. We <laughs> we just watched all three episodes again today. Um. All right. Where are we at now? I'm at 20:45 for me next. Um, oh, they, oh that, that's the egg bar. You have something. Oh, you have something before. Um. You were at 20 something. Yeah, the egg bar. Um. I just wanted to quick show this on screen. Oh, this yeah. This is the picture that Irving's been painting. Like, he has a trillion of these in his apartment. Right. And I think his Audi has no idea what he's painting, but he's drawn to painting this. I don't know if he's, like, dreaming this, like, or whatnot, but this is referred to as where Casey, Miss Casey goes walking through this door after Miss Cobell tells Milchick to take her to the testing floor the testing floor yeah so we're just still trying to kind of ponder on what the testing floor would would mean if anyone else has any yep any insight on that you can comment i just think it's interesting how uh, you know what comes to my mind is the whole testing by fire thing and how it's obviously there, there's like a down arrow and they're going down mm -hmm. and then it, it's red indicating like fire or they're like they're going down into hell right there. Yeah. Um. So and then and then also there's the mention by PD of the level where which no one returns. And so I think that could actually be the testing floor. What he's talking about. Could be. I don't know. We have very little for information. Um, should we get to the egg bar? Uh, yes. Oh, what do you got? We got 20. You can turn it on me. Yeah. Right. So here they are, as I indicated uh, on before. I'm they're scared just, about tonight. Glowing they're, red. They're in their extreme red symbolism. Uh, yeah. See, because they're talking about an event that represents the whole thing about the red and the blue. They're talking about yeah. the, well, what we'll talk about in a second. I don't want to give it all away, but, um, or maybe, maybe we need to. Um, I mean, this is the egg bar here. What do we got? 20. There, and there's okay, a scene there's... I mentioned where it's like Dylan, the representation of Jesus, the, the consummate worker, mm -hmm. uh, the one that will in a, in a moment here, uh, be talking to Heli about the sacrifice that he's going to have to do mm -hmm. for his fellow man and notice that, yeah, it's, it's those two discussing it. So I think this is some kind of representation of Jesus and the Holy spirit, like mulling over, Oh, do we really have to do this? You, yeah. you want to stay here and stick it out and do this. And Jesus is like, yeah, mm -hmm. you can, you can go somewhere else, bounce, whatever. I'm going to stick it out. <laughs> yep. And then where do they even, um, where is it? I mean, it's just coming up, right? Where they, they have that conversation. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Back to escort you to purpose. Oh, I must be past it. Dude. Are you talking about when they read Rickon's book and all that? It's when the two were, it's when the, it's when Heli and D Dylan are standing at the egg bar talking. I know I've got it. I know I've got it. Uh, yeah, I've got 24. Oh, here, I'm, I'm way off. 20. 45. Yeah, here, it comes up in a second. Here they are. I should be the one to stay behind. Yeah, I should be the one to stay behind. Nope. nope. Don't you want to see your kid again? What we're doing tonight is just the first step. That's, yeah, that's it. So what we're doing tonight is just the first step. And I take that as what I wrote is. Oh, he's saying that over this egg bar, which is a representation of Easter and his resurrection. Yeah. And the fact that 
just because he's sacrificing himself doesn't mean that it's the end game. Like they're, yeah. it's just the beginning of them being saved exactly from this whole all of, thing. All of red, red blooded natural man. Yeah. The the first step of us becoming untainted with the yeah. seed of the serpent mm -hmm. is the sacrifice and, and resurrection. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I've got. Uh, yeah, Dylan confirms he's going through with the sacrifice, and it's just the first step. And then I have in brackets in taking down the reptilians for good and finally eliminating their seed. Yeah, that's the inference, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and then I've got, uh, uh, and then I've got uh, Irving with the book. Yeah, show that. Here we go. And it's interesting. Yeah, that. He's got so much red on his face, despite he's he's out in the blue room. So I think this is for a reason, is because Irving is was a little bit more of a fighter to the truth, slow to come along around. Yeah. And uh, with all the stuff that's happened to him down here, he's finally uh, uh, finally turning to the you know team red, mm -hmm. the the seat of the woman. And I just love that look on his face, like, oh, I'm fuck you, man. Yeah. <laughs> All these guys. Yeah. And then, oh, coincidentally, it's the exact same color Helly's dre uh, dress, yeah. the dress was. And Dylan. So, And, and then the Holy Spirit is in Dylan, mm -hmm. in the white, mm -hmm. on the green, on earth. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And... Yep, and then he was, you know, obviously the last, the last guy that would do something like that before. So big turnaround for him. Yeah. A big fuck you to the system, and it was in the, what was the book series called? The compliance. Com compliance volumes. Yeah. Yeah. So a real big move for him. Mm-hmm. And I think in a way he kind of represents, you know, I'm trying to like equate, uh, things to modern times because I think we are now past the the end of the last age. And and I think we saw a bunch of Irvings, you know, like late comers to wake up. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that there was a lot of them. <laughs> uh, so a lot of people stuck it out on Team Blue and uh, took that needle mm -hmm. <laughs> that they showed. That uh, microchip to their brain. The, bla <laughs> the black goo. The black goo, yeah. Uh, oh, and on a, a side note on that, I just happened to catch, I don't know how I noticed it. Oh, I think it was in someone else's video about Black Goo. It was a Billie Eilish music video. Mm -hmm. now, I don't watch like any, oh, any, yeah. I know I don't exactly, watch any new music stuff. I know exactly what music video you're talking about. It's super creepy. It's like her falling down as a fallen angel, yeah. and then there's like this black goo like raining yeah. down. Yeah. Needle. Literally needles in her vaccines yeah. all syringes yeah. all jammed up in her back. Yeah. Come on. Hello. <laughs> and that was, and that, was, that couldn't have been any more clear. And, and what I don't even know. I didn't even look into it. What year was that? Oh, pff, I have no idea. But it wasn't within the last two years. Oh, I don't know. She's like a newer artist. I don't know. She got like I all I know about her is that she came up and had like five of these awards in like one year. Yeah. But, the, but that was like five or six years ago. She was in yeah. So it, so it must have sure. been, I think it was before, what I'm trying to say is it was probably before the the the, the black jabs were offered <laughs> to people. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. I suspect it was. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, what, do you, what do you got now? I think we have the same thing, but I'll go to it. Um, Dylan, basically another just representation of Christ here yes. and uh, being one with yeah. the Father. Yes, this was so good. It's likely we'll all wake up around people. Could be driving or skiing, whatever we do up there. So be ready for anything as you go up the elevator, okay? The important thing is you find someone it seems you can trust and you tell them everything. Now, we don't know how long Dylan will be able to give us, so we can't get distracted thinking into our lives. Right. The mission is the priority. Is he gonna get to it? You're the one that gave me this timestamp, so I'm not sure. I've got 2740. But that's what I went to. Um, but either way, um, likely we'll all wait. 
Yeah. They they play on this twice where it takes it's a two man operation. It takes two people to operate because it switches on two sides of the door. Yep. Uh, opposite sides of the door. So um, it's just a representation of Jesus saying, "I and the Father are one." He's like two two people two yep. people in one. So. Yep. We took the same note, Gen- same Bible verse. I yeah. and my Father are one. Mm-hmm. So, so more just indicating the same. And oh, then, also I've got a 2855. Maybe I think that's like kind of related here. Yeah, I have a 20. You from yeah. the wall. But, but my, my friends, the hour is yours. And then I like what he says. Page 197 slaps. Page yeah. 197 slaps. Yeah, I know. That was funny. Um It's a it's a bassist thing, that thing like Slaps, yeah, yeah. It, it, um, or anyone else. It's, it's being more being generic, but but so what did you take for that? Well, he, I can't remember exactly what he just said, but I took down John. Uh, uh, represents John twelve twenty three through twenty six in this, um, and Jesus answered them saying, "The hour has come, and the Son of Man should be glorified." Um, so right before. He's crucified. He's speaking to his disciples. And and just then, that same thing that Rickon is saying in his book, that it's your hour, I think it's it's just a good representation of that. Okay. Yeah, and I just took down more more generically, like regardless of even what was said, I I I was just stunned how it's like a um it is written, or is it not written? You know, just just the fact that Jesus knows the scriptures mm-hmm. and he's constantly quoting it. Yeah. And because the fact that Dylan has it memorized. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's and good. like was able to quote the scriptures. Yeah. Like Jesus. You know what I mean? I just have, yeah, demonstrating superhuman knowledge of the scriptures because that's what the book, again, that's what the book mm-hmm. represents mm-hmm. is, is knowledge from the super world, the, the world from above, the, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if if all we are is nested spheres of realities, you know, well, knowledge inspired from the world above. And that it makes a good point to the fact that Mark's any is almost in a sense spiritually accepting of that book. So it has changed his life, but his Audi um hasn't even barely had a chance to even read the book. Like Rickon at his house when they're talking. Yeah. He thinks Mark is joking with him when he yep. says it's changed my whole world. Yep. And it's because he's used to uh, him being so spiritually closed off um, as an Audi. You know what? Whoa. That right there is the whole truth drop in itself. So people, not just me, and this is actually part of my worldview, but a mil- a mil- it's got to be millions of other people where we're like here to grow spiritually. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's like it, it's 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 like Mark's innies education just hasn't been passed up yet to his outer self. So his innie, you know, us here, mm-hmm. we're learning stuff that again get, in the end it gets passed on to your your higher self. And and so Mark's higher self is still not caught up. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Because you just said that his outer self is usually like, kind of like he's kind of numb to a yeah. lot of the spiritual aspects of everything. Yeah. Yeah. He's so very... his outer self isn't caught up yet. So. Yeah. But eventually he will be, because I, I suspect in the next season that's not how. But I suspect eventually they're going to be merged, and Mark will kind of like onboard all this advanced spiritual knowledge from his innie who's yeah. been reading the book. That's like us here going through like trials and tribulations. And yeah. then we're, and then we like, you know, blast out of this body. We go back up to our higher self or whatever. And then we're like, Oh man. And then we're all of a sudden super, so much more wise. Yeah. Well, you can look at, yeah, it's just like his Audi, their outer version has been, um, almost in a sense brainwashed by everything that they've seen and went through on, on earth. 
and their any is like this brand new, not been um, masked or anything by lies because they don't really know anything as an any. So right. their their spiritual side is so much more alive and and willing to uh, take okay. things in. Okay. Yeah. So you see, there's their spiritual side on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Forty two. Oh, this is just a little tiny interesting thing. Is this still on seven or episode? Yeah, this is on eight forty. You have anything before forty two thirty five? Yes. Yeah, you have a lot. So let me go to forty three. Okay, so yeah. So this scene right here. So Dylan wins a waffle party. Um, and this is right. how they're representing the waffles. It's completely a 12 pointed star, the way that they're stacked oh, it is? that way. Okay. Yes. And my notes on a 12 pointed star, uh, I have a few things. One thing I highlighted here is that that's a 12 sided figure most commonly represents the Zodiac. Okay. So... I highlighted that because mm. I feel like Lumen, just the name alone, points towards um, worshiping of uh, star entities and things like that, like uh, the sun god. And, well, and, it means light. Yeah, it means, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the stars. Um, Angel of light. And I said there's a lot of god and goddesses that are met, represented by uh, most stars out there and the sun and moon right, and right. things like that. Um, I mean, obviously, this is like a major scene. Yeah. The weird waffle party so thing. I'm getting, but but yeah. I couldn't. I watched it and I was like, oh, this. there's either so much here that I'm just <laughs> zoning out. Or, <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot. So uh, then I looked up. Um, I found this on some someone's goddess website. So it's very like new agey. Um, okay. uh, witch mysticism type stuff that they actually believe in. Um, tarot cards. That's the, oh, that's, that's the phrase. <laughs> yes. When you said that, you know, those words, it came to my mind. <laughs> so the, it says the 12 point of star consisted of two Merca, Merca, Merkaba. Yes. Merc. Yeah. Merkabas. Yeah, the Merkabas. Um, is 3d representation representation of the eighth or cosmic gateway. The gateway that leads to alternate dimensions and realities. So going back Yo. to like what you were saying um, earlier, it's totally related to that. And then Merkabas are, it is a love-oriented dance oh. between the energies of unconditional love and unceasing light. Okay, so we see that... Wait, um, wait I got something big too. When he finishes eating the waffles, yeah, there's the the phrase that says, "Now go to the yes, the uh the see who is the who's founder's the, bed." The founder's bed. So, in other words, it was so you just mentioned that it might be some reference to like some kind of a portal. So when he gets through the portal, go to the founder. So it's a destination. Yeah. So on the other side of the portal is a destination. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It, it transcend dimensional levels of consciousness. Consciousness. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll have to look into this. Oh, yeah. I kind of skipped off where the plate said that, but yep. um, we'll just do a little bit of this weird dance that goes on. Just like a second. Very bizarre. And the fact that he's sitting there with that mask on, it's just... It's so creepy, I can't even handle it. It's and just, all the masks of all the dancers. All of them, yeah. Like, I can't, I don't even watch this scene over yeah. and over. Like, I, I, don't, I didn't even come back for a second to watch it. I'm like, screw this. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. It's it's way it's too bizarre. So sure. bizarre. Yeah. Okay, so what do you got? Uh, so this is when Dylan is in the control room. And I, I just have to try to freeze frame right when they flash to the screen. So he's doing his like trackball flip click, you know, whatever directions. Yeah. 
which it looks far more complicated than what they were uh, uh, summarizing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just thought it was interesting here. On the left, Eric C. And then here, Lewis C. So my name, so Eric <laughs> Eric Lewis is me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just thought that was interesting. I mean, spelled with a K instead of my C, but but there's a C right next to it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's just an interesting catch. That my name is right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's not like a ton of names here. And like, why are some, why are some blacked out? Those dead? <laughs> I don't know. In Mark F. Wait. Is Mark is Mark F F S S right? Maybe those are dead ones. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It'd be fun to do an analysis on like which ones are grayed out and what do their name means. Yeah, their names mean. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and that that's it for this episode. Uh, just go to the next one if if you don't have anything else. Yeah, I need to go to. Okay. Yeah, there's that song again. And the first thing I've got is uh, 350. So I mean, like the main event. This is really just there's there's not much going um, on here other than the main event. Uh, uh, the the pinnacle of the entire show. Yeah, true. Is the sacrifice. It's at 350. Um, what do you got? Uh, 315, real quick, just to talk on Irving's dad. But apparently. It Oh wait, that yeah. was what you had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll oh, we'll, weird. we'll stay okay. here for a second. Yeah, go I ahead. mean, the symbolism is screaming in our face, like "Hello, dummy." This is a symbolism, and this is a representation of the sacrifice and of Jesus. Yeah, very on much the cross. so. Uh, yep, just solidifying all the other uh, nuggets indicating the same. Yes. Okay, whatever you got next. Oh, I just like how he he's he uh, looks over at his uh, statue gift and says, you know, this better be working, assholes. Mm -hmm. And in Dylan speak, that's, you know, saying like my best friends. Yeah, exactly. So I'll just play that here for fun. Here we go. Oh, I swear he looks over. Anyway, wasting time. Moving on. <laughs> what do you got? Okay. I'm now I think this is the Irving's dad stuff. Okay. Oh right. So Irving's dad's chest of navy stuff? Yeah, so he was in the navy and apparently with all this information that he finds hidden away, uh his dad seemed to be very on to Lumen and uh and did not like what they were doing. Right. Um, and I and of course the the symbolism here to break down is that his dad was in the navy. Yeah. Okay. Just more maritime stuff. Yep. Yeah. And that. Oh no. I don't know what I looked at. Um. You hit N. I don't know what VLC. I don't does know what N, N does with that either. Okay, but I want to hit. If you have something. No, I don't. I mean, okay. I've got, well, I've got one, one thing. We're ending the video in a minute, in a minute here. Yeah, they do. Oh my gosh. Do you know what happened? I think it went all the way to a. Another. Okay. Let's just, let's just talk about let's it. Let's just talk about it. Okay. So I got the address of where they live. Um, They actually live in the town called Kier. Right. And it's in Prince Edward Island in Canada. Okay. And I looked up. That's that P E. Yeah. Prince Edward. Yeah. And it's actually considered part of maritime provinces. There's three provinces that are like considered maritime provinces, which I just thought was great that yep. they even picked this this town and this providence because of the maritime um, label on it. Interesting. What else did I say? They went all out for yeah. I had a bunch holy of holy sea symbolism. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I've just got one last thing at uh, 2950. Okay, go ahead with that. They told me not to talk to you. The goddamn OTC's been triggered. Mark S is a fucking idiot. What? That's not possible. Here it comes. It's Dylan. They've been plotting this all along. There you go. It's Dylan. They've been plotting this all along. I didn't actually catch that she just pointed out Dylan. Specifically. Yeah. Like, how would she know that it's Dylan? Yeah. She doesn't. She can't. Well. No, she. it could be Irving as far as she knows. Well, no, because Mark chose him to have the waffle party. Oh, okay, so she, she doesn't. She know knows that, that he's the okay. one that like, stayed, stayed late. late. Okay. Yeah. It could, yeah. But still, she was like, anyone but Dylan. Like, don't choose Dylan. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it was something like she knew that he was something kind of special. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That is an interesting point a thing to point out that she, and of course, this is like what Lucifer has been trying to do with man this whole many multi thousand years is trying to root out the the line of the seed of the woman so that Jesus could not incarnate into a red blooded man body. Yep. And so that's kind of just another reference to what she's all up in arms about right now is it's still they've been planning this all along. Yeah. Like have you ever heard the phrase the gospel in the stars? Like that's a long time. The whole gospel is in the stars. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, they've been planning it for a long time and they've had, uh, you know, fallen angels, Lucifer, whatever they, they've had a long time to try to stop it, but we're unable to. Yes. So I think her, yeah, her, like what you just said, her little, uh, hesitation to, to let, um, Dylan go to the waffle party. Yeah. Was on was on point. But yeah. but she didn't follow through with it because yeah. Um you know, evil side doesn't win. They they can't see the end. They can't see anything mm -hmm. more than one step ahead or zero steps ahead. <laughs> yeah, which is why they have to pre program their steps prior to you doing them. Oh, well, that's um, all I got. I was just gonna do him um I'll point to this. Uh so Helena now oh, yeah. is talking to her father, uh, the CEO of Egan or of Lumen. And this is what he's saying. I just thought it was really interesting. I will. Oh. Uh, because of you. Oh, they will. Uh, Everyone, the whole. She, okay. This is where it is. I will. You just played it. Same. Because of you. <laughs> Oh, I didn't think I got that beginning part. They will all get severed is because of her. Is, is what? Yeah, so is, it's is a what big, he's talking about. Yes. And so I just thought that was interesting that they. Oh, you know what? He goes on to say um, one more thing. There we go. Oh. They'll all be Kier's children. Whoa. So pointing to the fact that this is Lucifer's plan. He wants everyone oh. to be his. His seed. Yes. Yeah. So that was yep. very telling of what the whole thing is about. Yep. Yep. So that's it. We've just finished up Severance. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for watching. If you actually spent all the hours, we're going to try to make these videos shorter and shorter, uh, less dead air. Uh, uh. You know, this is hard to do. We're not, we're not going to edit videos. We're just going to yeah. hit record and talk uh, because of our inspiration behind starting this channel. It was just the fact that when me and Val start talking about movies, TV shows, music videos, music, um, things in print, you know, mm -hmm. just we just find the most amazing, mind blowing stuff that no one else is talking about. So we got it. Yeah. We're like, OK, got <laughs> to just set up something on camera and instead sit our butts here and talk instead of just yeah. like in kitchen and whatever. And like, no one, no one profits yeah. is, is what I'm saying. No <laughs> one profits from our mind Insane exploding theories. revelations yeah. that, that are powered from thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of reading and watching stuff. 
Yeah. So just like the Bible says, and I don't know where on the quote, but it says, uh, watch, therefore. You know, and the, the indication is to to go up on the, the, the city wall and watch. And I've been doing that for like 17 years. So I've seen a lot of stuff. And now I'm trying to shout down to the villagers mm -hmm. what I've what I've been seeing for all this time up on the up on the uh, uh, the wall. Mm -hmm. So in other words, like I'm finally reaping the re I need to reap something from all this time spent uh, looking at all these symbols and 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 stuff. So um, that's why we're making the videos. Yeah, it's just so someone can profit from our what I just said. You know, from our thoughts. Yeah, because because I like listening to interesting people. Yeah. For hours and hours, I'll just listen to people, even if there's only a few nuggets here and there. Hey, if there's a known nugget coming up, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm in for hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, give a preview of our next video. It's going to be radio free. Al I even hate saying it. It's so weird. Album muff. Yes. A L B U. M, no, I A L B <laughs> E M U T H. It's L like that. It's A L B. Yeah, it's it's not even a freaking English word. I don't know what. I'm, and it's funny. I was like, I'm, it's I'm, a good I'm, movie. I'm a master speller, and and I can hardly even say or think about the word album muff. It, yeah, album muth. It's something you barely we never see. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a Philip K. Dick movie, and uh, we we saw it like a year and a half ago. Yeah around the same time so we're gonna rewatch it tomorrow and make a video that's it okay okay video over catch you next time